Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this sample from the new upcoming chapter of my Blender animation course Alive, I will explain you when to use forward or inverse kinematics in your animation and how to seamlessly switch between those mechanisms. Let's get started. During the blocking stage, I've switched between inverse kinematic and forward kinematic quite a few times. We've experienced it's pretty obvious when to switch. These rules might not be carved into stone. They should help you figuring out when and how to switch. Let's first compare both mechanisms. Forward kinematics is the most obvious mechanism. We can consider the forward kinematic as being a chain with a root and a tip. The previous bone in the hierarchy will influence the next bone in the hierarchy till the tip of the chain. It's the perfect mechanism to create great arcs and it generally offers the animator the best control over his character's shape, making it the perfect fit whenever you are rigging or animating a tail. It's personally my go-to whenever I'm animating character arms. The benefit of forward kinematic is also its weakness. Since the behavior of a controller depends on the behavior of all the previous controllers, it can be super tricky to deal with the position of a specific controller in space. For example here, I have a hard time matching the pose where the character will have his hand on his hips in a relaxed pose. Basically, as soon as you are contacting with the feet or the hands, you may want to switch to inverse kinematics. Here I'm trying to pose my character doing push-ups, but the arms are in forward kinematics, therefore they are following their hierarchy. The torso moves, so the shoulder moves, so does the arms, so does the forearms, and it's almost impossible to keep track of the hands and keep them on the ground. While if I now switch to inverse kinematic, the hand of my character will stay in position. And it really facilitates this kind of animation or this kind of posing. The inverse kinematics mechanism is built to calculate the rotation and orientation of each joint in a chain based on the transform of the initial joint but most importantly, on the transform of the final joint. In this case, the hand of the character. That's why most of the time, legs are using inverse kinematics controllers. This way, when animating a walk cycle, you can do most of the heavy lifting, focusing on the foot motion. On a landing animation, once you figured out the contacting point for the feet, you just have to focus on the root of your character and the upper torso. This also makes inverse kinematic the best choice whenever you are interacting with objects, especially if both ends are on the object. Some rigs have built-in functions that allow you to parent the character inverse kinematic hand controllers to his various pieces of equipment. If it's not the case, the go-to constraint is the child of constraint. You first select the object, then the hand controller, Press Ctrl Shift C and add a child of constraint. I can repeat the process for both hands controllers and they are now both following the spear. But I can still fine tweak the hand position without moving the spear. This makes both animating and posing double handed equipment way easier. Once you're done with your animation and you want to get rid of the constraint, you can select both inverse kinematic controllers and simply search for bake, bake the action and get rid of the constraint in the baking option. Blender will write a new key per frame recording the motion of the previously constrained hands. But the constraint will be removed. If you haven't polished your animation yet, you may want to keep the constraint. The cool thing is that you can insert a keyframe on the influence of the constraint, and when you want to switch it off, just set the influence to zero. 
A very important thing is to switch between the one value and zero value of the influence over one frame. This to avoid any interpolation, but we'll see that later on. You can use exactly the same technique on any kind of props. With my hand inverse kinematic control selected, I will add a child of constraint and source a sphere. I can then repeat the process for the second hand, or I can select the second hand then select the first constraint end and use the copy to select operation in the constraint panel. Both ends are now following the motion of the sphere. Another situation where inverse kinematic shines is when you want a straight motion path for your hands or your feet. By default, Blender will interpolate the inverse kinematic controller along this straight path. Finally, when the hands or the feet lead the animation, it's way easier to use inverse kinematic than forward kinematic, because you are more focused on the position of the hand in space than the arc drawn by the elbows, the wrist and the fingers. And you can still consider those later on using the pole target controllers and the tweaker of the fingers or the arms. In this regard, a lot of animators prefer to use inverse kinematic for the hands, though inverse kinematic also have downsides. Inverse kinematics mechanisms are not ideal to create good arcs. Since they are based on the location of the target, in this case the foot of the character, between two poses, Blender will interpolate in a straight line. And to get nice arcs, as you can see in the graph editor, I will need to polish each location channel, and this will require a lot of keys. Motion Capture's animator often combine this kind of inverse kinematic motion with additional constraint to draw better up. If I was to animate the second bone on this forward kinematic chain, with the root bone performing a swing motion, when posing the bone, it will add a new keyframe and the motion path will update most of the time with smooth arcs. And it's super easy to get a nice swinging motion, only using one rotation curve. While if I'm using inverse kinematic, I will have a hard time posing my mechanism and keeping a consistent curvature. Plus, beyond the fact that I will need more data to get a clean arc, there are big chances that some of them looks very bad with hard angles and straight lines. So don't hesitate to switch back and forth between inverse kinematics and forward kinematics to facilitate your animation process. Now let's see how to switch between both. First of all, you may not switch between inverse kinematic and forward kinematic using multiple frame. If you do this, the interpolation of the IK or the FK will interpolate and you will have to fight with your rig to fix the poses. So if I want to switch to inverse kinematics on frame 3, I will go on frame 2 and key my arm in forward kinematics with full influence. Now we have a proper snap between frame 2 and frame 3. Then your job as an animator is to polish the animation from frame 0 to frame 2 so that you get a seamless transition between frame 2 and frame 3. If you don't have any snapping mechanism that allows you to match the FK pose with the IK pose automatically, then what you can do is to try to match the current pose, whether it's in inverse kinematic or forward kinematics, with the other mechanism. For example, here I'm using inverse kinematic and I'd like to switch when the character will pull off the sword. Let's say I want to do this on frame 10. For the time being, I'm using inverse kinematic. So I will go on frame 9 and I will key my constraint. Then I will go on frame 10 and switch to forward kinematics. The inverse kinematic controllers does not work anymore. Now what I want to do is make my forward kinematic pose here to match the inverse kinematic pose. So I will go onto frame 9 where I'm still in inverse kinematic and holding D in the top view, I will draw the silhouette of the arm of my character. Then switch to front view and do the same. From there, I will play with my forward kinematic controllers on frame 10 and I will try to match the pose. 
you don't need it to be perfect because later on this is going to be a transition pose where the character start to move the arm if he's not moving the arm or if you want the hand to stay still keep it in inverse kinematics and as soon as you start moving the arm switch this will also give you better result whenever you are baking your animation or exporting it for your game engine. This is how I did it for my character intro animation. Here I'm in FK and on the next frame I will be in inverse kinematic. During the polishing stage I made sure that I had a nice arc on the wrist. And this way I get a seamless transition. From this point I was in inverse kinematic until there where I'm switching to forward kinematic just here. Again, focusing on the spacing of the wrist and I'm transitioning a final time at the very end of the animation when the character is lifting the spear just there and I've used the same method throughout the whole animation. 